Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. You know, one topic that we haven't talked about here on the Nowy Dive Team Report is, well, it's one of the most primal and natural of all topics. And I am talking about that four-letter word, sex. According to our website, oceaninc.org, Mara Hart is a writer, a researcher, and a hybrid thinker. And I'm going to ask her about that here in just a little bit. Her book is called Sex in the Sea, and it takes readers on a journey unlike any other. And it's also been called Erotica of the Deep. Mara Hart, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Greg. Is sex a four-letter word? (laughs) Certainly not in my world. It's, It's one of the most common things that animals are doing, and certainly ocean animals are doing every day. What brought you to do a book like this? Well, I was looking for a way to reach outside of the kind of typical choir of folks who who love oceans and get oceans on the radar of people who might not tend to think about them or have the pleasure of diving in them uh, on on frequent occasion. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to compete out there with all the other sort of news stories and interest stories and um, get oceans to be sort of top of mind. And there are a lot of challenges facing oceans today. So I thought it was really important that we do so, but to do so in a way that would be fun and engaging and sort of pique people's curiosities rather than just tell the doom and gloom stories. And to be honest, I was at a cocktail party and I was hanging out with a bunch of friends and we were having a conversation about the um, the differences between men and women and, and some of the challenges that can create. And one of my friends made a comment. Uh, she, she said, I, I wish, you know, I could just be a guy for one day and understand what was, you know, going on in their heads and their bodies and just know what their world was like. And I, being the nerdy marine biologist said, oh, well, yeah, you know, if only we could be like parrotfish, that would that would be perfect. And you know, everybody stopped and sort of <laughs> there was just this silence and these blank stares, and people were sort of like, "What?" And I went on to explain, "Oh, well, you know, parrotfish start as females, and then that individual transitions to a male later in life, so they know." And it sort of opened up this whole conversation, and I wound up chatting to folks for you know several minutes about the sex lives of marine life and all the crazy things they do. And people were so curious and they were so engaged. And then about 10 minutes later, I was, you know, refilling my, my cocktail glass at another part of the party. And I heard one of the people I'd been chatting to repeating one of the stories I had told and said, Hey, you know, did you know fish change sex? Isn't that crazy? And I just thought, that's it. You know, <laughs> sex is everybody wants to know about it, even if they're they don't admit it. They're curious. And truthfully, you know, sex really is the heart of sustainability. Without successful sex in the sea or otherwise, species stop. Uh, that's the end. So we have to be able to make sure that these animals are reproducing and in, in in good health and in good form in order to have all of the uh, the future abundance that we're hoping for from from the ocean. So you took it then, and there's kind of an omen that you needed to pursue sex a little further, right? This is true, yeah. And, it, you know, it did take a while. So that I am, gosh, I think that particular conversation happened. It was while I was still in graduate school getting getting my doctorate. So we're, we're pushing 10 years um, <laughs> in the making. But that's what happens when you, you know, finish your studies and uh, get jobs and families. So the book was sort of a... A labor of love, if you will. And um, it came out a couple months ago, and it's really the compilation of the work of dozens of experts. I, I like to call them my sexperts uh, who study marine reproduction because it is a really, really difficult and mysterious part of the life cycle. And it's hard to see, especially in the marine environment. So we tend to have experts who specialize in understanding the way reproductive you know, biology happens and, and strategies happen in different animals. And so I, I had the pleasure of knowing corals very well, because that's one of the species that I studied in particular. But then for other animals, I got to go and, and chat with all of these wonderful minds and, and hear about how how they were learning what they learned, and then all these wild, wonderful tales of, of the way these animals do it. 
You know, the interesting thing, you mentioned the coral spawning. That is the, the probably the, the top one that we hear yes. about. I mean, because it is such a you know, unusual thing to have that happen on one particular day at one particular time yes. with the moon being in just one particular place. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it, it is what I consider magic. Absolutely. And it's one of my favorite. And, and one of the things that's so neat about it is it is accessible to the public. I mean, you don't even have to dive. I think diving is a, a wonderful way to truly be immersed in the magic, but you can also snorkel. These happen on shallow reefs and it is like clockwork. And if you think about it, this is millions and millions of individual animals, the tiny coral polyps that are celibate all year, right? They don't have sex all year round. And then, like you said, on one night, it's normally a couple of days after the full moon in the Caribbean, it happens, um, starting to happen now it's in the summertime and they do it right after sunset or a few hours after sunset. And you could set your watch to it for each species. They have a very specific time and year on year, the same colony will spawn the same number of days after the full moon at the same number of minutes within two to three minutes after the, the time that they did the year before. So it is extremely precise and they all coordinate. And so it's basically this full moon sex party of a mass orgasm of all these animals all in synchrony. And it basically turns the water into sort of the, this underwater blizzard of um, tiny bright pink coral bundles of sperm and eggs it's it's pretty wild and it's definitely something folks can just go with a you know a dive light and a mask and and you can see it which is really really cool now you are a diver as well so you have you are oh, yes. a part of our world mm -hmm. of course i've been diving um i was trying to remember i got my junior open water with naui I think I was 11 or 12, um, and I did it down in Big Pine Key, Florida, uh, at sea camp there, and um, have was hooked ever since. I mean, I knew this was home was beneath the surface for for as long as I can remember. So yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of of diving, but you know, if you can't dive, snorkeling is great. So I always say to folks, don't let don't let the the diving stop you. Go get it. Go get certified because it's the best thing you can do. But certainly you can get out there and, and stick a mask on and I have a peek at what's happening beneath the surface. Mara, I wish you all the best with uh, having some sex in the sea. Well, thanks so much, Greg. And I, I hope that uh, all your divers can um, write into me on the website and let me know what kind of sex in the sea they've witnessed. Any species are welcome. No human stories. We already know those ones. And that's this episode of Nowie's Dive Team Report. As always, check us out online at nowie.org. You can pick us up uh, on iTunes, also on YouTube, and uh, through the Nowie website. I'm Greg Martin. Thanks for listening. I'll see you underwater. <laughs>